So after the Australian Grand Prix, guys, let's get into a bit of a debated topic as to do the FIA incorrectly use red flags? Do they use it too often? Do they use it for means of spicing things up? Let's get into all of the examples of the red flag in the races being used since the passing of Charlie Whiting, of course, the GOAT of FIA race directors. And it really has been downhill ever since. So let's get into whether, again, the red flags used in races since the 2020 Italian Grand Prix, which was the first one in a race after Charlie Whiting had passed away and Michael Massey had took over. Let's see whether from then on that it is all justified. So at the 2020 Italian Grand Prix, we had a red flag because Charles Leclerc went in very hard into the barriers on the exit of the final corner, the Parabolica, and damaged the barrier. Now, this area, damaged barriers, is, I guess, yeah, I think you'd probably have to say up for debate, because at what point does a barrier become too damaged, I guess you could say, um, that it needs to be fixed under a red flag? And it is a bit of a... Um, it's not a slam dunk that if, you know, a, a barrier is damaged, that it should cause a red flag. Because, of course, whenever a driver goes into the barriers, the barrier is going to be damaged to a certain extent. And not always do they cause red flags. Now, in a lot of the instances we're going to go through, a lot of the red flags because of damaged barriers, um, I think, were correct. But let me know in the comments whether you agree with there being red flags for a damaged barrier. Because back in Charlie Whiting's era of running, uh, you know, Formula 1 races pretty much, we didn't see red flags necessarily for that type of stuff. So I'd be interested to hear what you guys think of that. But in my personal view, I agree in this instance of there being a red flag because the barrier was damaged. The tyres, uh, you can see there a good shot of Charles Leclerc's on board. The tyres were now exposed and the barrier was not um, not in good enough quality anymore because of Leclerc's, uh, you know, hitting it and having the crash to be safe enough for, you know, if another driver ended up in that same part of the barrier. So I think in this instance, the red flag was justified. And just one race later, we got not one but two red flag situations. The first one was completely justified because we had a massive pile up on the pit straight on the restart of the race after a safety car between, what was it, four or five drivers? And it was, yeah, it was really uh, a very um, expensive crash between so many different drivers, as you can see here, an Alfa Romeo of Antonio Giovinazzi. And... You know, the McLaren there. I think it was of Carlos Sainz and even the Haas there of Kevin Magnussen. Many cars out. And because there was so many cars all over the place and debris everywhere blocking the entire track, I think, yeah, it was completely justified for that instance. But then we add a second red flag for Lance Stroll's monumental crash later on in the lap, going into the very fast right-hander, I think it was, uphill in the middle sector. And he had uh, a tyre blowout and then went into the barriers. And as you can see there, the front of the tyre barrier came off and left the tyres behind it exposed. And again, in this instance, I think it is absolutely justified to throw a red flag to repair the barriers. Because the barriers, of course, are supposed to help, um, you know, not cause injury to the drivers when they go off the track for whatever reason. So... The red flags in this race at Mugello, a crazy race it was, I think were absolutely justified. And then, of course, at the Bahrain Grand Prix, they were justified because Romain Grosjean had the worst accident in Formula 1 history that did not result in a death. Um, yeah, it was absolutely monumental, his accident, as you can see here with this picture, and even... Um, if I can just get it up quickly, this picture showing what happened to the barrier. I still cannot believe that he is still on this planet. 
after this crash. But yeah, the red flag absolutely justified for incredible damage done to the barrier and very nearly a fatal accident for Roman Grosjean. But then we get to the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix with Valtteri Bottas and George Russell having an absolutely massive crash on the entry to turn one. Both drivers out and there was, as you can see here, lots of debris on the circuit. Now, I do remember at the time people being a bit miffed that this caused eventually a red flag. Initially, the safety car came up, but eventually it was red flagged. I can see why, to a certain extent, why people think that this wasn't quite red flaggable, but with the amount of debris on the track going into turn one, there was simply no chance for the drivers to negotiate, even behind the safety car, turn one, without you know picking up debris that would have probably caused punctures on the restart of the race. So, yeah, it was absolutely justified, in my view, because of not really the cars off the track but the debris you know all across the track that made it impossible for the driver still out there to actually you know get through it all without picking up a puncture or some sort of damage to their car which of course would make things very unsafe so justified that red flag in my view but then we go on to the baku grand prix in 2021 max verstappen of course was leading with, uh, what was it, three or four laps to go, and then had a massive tyre blowout at the end of the pit straight almost, went into the wall and was out of the race. Now, I do not think this red flag was justified. And the reason is, is because, and this is a great picture to show really, the debris on the track, there was debris on the track, there is no doubt about it, but it was not strewn all across the pit straight to the point where drivers could not find their way past without picking up punctures and serious damage to their cars. And um, obviously it was uh, red flagged. I believe also another reason was not just because of debris, but also um, to protect against the risk of further tire failures if they had just thrown the safety car out because there was only i think three laps of racing left or four laps of racing left um before we got you know the uh restart if they had just thrown the safety car out then there wouldn't have been a risk of tire failures anyway because behind the safety car the drivers are not going quick enough that if they suffer a tyre failure, that they're going to have a crash that could result in injury or even worse. So in my view, the red flag in Baku was not justified. And I know people may say, well, it led to a very exciting finish to the race. Of course, we got an amazing end with Lewis Hamilton going for the lead, locking up and then ended up finishing in like 14th place or something like that in the end. But... As I think some of you out there will agree, and here is that iconic picture, I would say, Hamilton getting into the lead and then going deep. As some of you may agree, I do not think that safety cars and red flags should be used to spice things up or make things more entertaining. That is not what they are there for. The red flag is there for if, you know, we have had a massively serious accident you know, too much debris on the track, damaged barriers, um, tractors having to come onto the track to recover cars, stuff like that. That's what red flags should be used for. The debris, as you saw from Verstappen's car, it was not strewn across the track to the point where, as you saw with the Bottas and Russell incident, they, the drivers could not find their way through without picking up damage. They should have just finished it under the safety car. Yes, we got a classic ending to the race. I get that. It was brilliant. But from a sporting perspective, it was not the right thing to do. They should have just ended it under a safety car and left it at that. And, of course, the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton fans uh, really don't want to, you know, think back to that race when it comes to poor decision-making from the FIA race director. But I think we can also look at Baku when it comes to poor decision making from Michael Massey, because again, it should not have been a red flag. It was not red flag worthy in my view. And the argument of, well, 
it was to have a you know a, a a green flag racing at the end of the race or to have um an exciting end that is not a justified sporting reason to finish the race you know with green flag racing so yeah in my view lewis hamilton definitely uh was cost you know quite a lot of points by not ending the race under the safety car which i think would have been the right thing to do and of course that would have turned things in the championship quite a lot not just what massey decided to do in the final race which is why i'm making that point about how you know let's not just pay attention to what massey did at the final race of 2021 but also what he did at this race which i think was the wrong thing to do and uh, of course i think it was uh, red bull's jonathan wheatley who told michael massey on the radio that he should red flag it um a red flag the race i don't think i mean if he did take his advice on board and that's what caused him to you know red flag the race i mean of course we're not going to know um of course uh whether that did have an effect it's impossible to tell whether that's the reason why he decided to red flag things but um yeah i just think the red flag was not justified at all for the azerbaijan grand prix and i think it should not have been used to spice things up maybe in the way that you could argue it was Next up, we have the British Grand Prix red flag at that race at the end of lap one for the uh, accident between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. This was justified because Verstappen, I think, was injured. Um, I th think he was. Uh, not massively, but was injured to a certain extent. And also, as you can see, the barrier was damaged as well. So red flag there was absolutely justified. Then, at the Hungarian Grand Prix, it's a bit difficult to say with this one whether the red flag here was justified because, yeah, we had lots of cars out of the race on the first lap. We had a lot of uh, debris out there, but I don't think it was enough debris to, like, make things uh, or make the track impossible to drive and, you know, possible to avoid the debris out there for the drivers who were still in the race. Um... Yeah, it's, it's difficult with this race to say whether the red flag was justified because thinking back, I can't remember whether there were cars that were dangerously parked in certain places that had to be recovered by a recovery vehicle or a tractor, something like that, uh, that, you know, maybe you could argue could cause uh, the red flag to come out. So, yeah, it's hard to say with this one. I'm kind of leaning no, it was not justified. But again, I'd probably have to go back and watch that race on the first lap or two more intently to know, you know, uh, were the cars that retired, were they at parts of the track where you would not want a tractor or a recovery vehicle coming back uh, or coming onto the track to recover that broken down car? So, yeah, maybe a bit of a 50-50 that one. Let me know in the comments whether you think it was justified or not. Of course, for Spa... It was, it was uh, yeah, just too wet. Uh, there's nothing I think anyone could have done that day. Yeah, it was very disappointing. It was a very long wait, but I don't think we could have gone racing that day. It was just way too wet to go racing. And, uh, yeah, very sad we didn't get a race that day because who knows what exciting action we could have got. And then the final red flag situations of the season were in Saudi Arabia. The second one was here with uh, the accident on the restart of the race after the first uh, red flag. Well, we had Perez out of the race, uh, Mazepin out of the race as well, uh, George Russell out of the race for an accident on the exit of turn two going into turn three. Um, in this instance, I would say justified because you had two cars pretty much broken down on the track that couldn't be recovered safely by a recovery vehicle. And also there was quite a bit of debris strewn across the track. So I think in that case, it was justified. But if we go to this one this was the first what caused the first red flag mick schumacher's car in the barrier at turn 20 or 22 i can't remember exactly the uh, corner um at the Jeddah circuit if you look at the barrier which is what caused the race to be red flagged for a damaged barrier was it really that damaged not sure it was and i think i remember at the time because i did a race watch along for that 
uh, Grand Prix. I'm pretty sure at the time I said it wasn't justified and that the barrier did not look bad enough for it to be a red flag situation. So, yeah, not sure it was quite justified in this case. But yeah, the second one, go back to that, absolutely was justified in that case. Now, let's move on to 2022, the post Michael Massey era. Uh, the first one of 2022, Mick Schumacher here in the barriers in Monaco absolutely justified his car, as you can see, falling apart after a massive crash and the barriers uh, quite a bit more damaged than it was when he crashed Mick in Saudi Arabia um, at the end of 2021. Uh, the British Grand Prix absolutely justified because Joe was not only, um, he wasn't in the barriers, he was over the barriers and actually... Uh, next to or leaning on the fence right next to the fans and was in a precarious situation. So yeah, absolutely justified. And remember, of course, there were fans on the track. Um, what was it, like 30, 45 seconds after the start of the race, there were fans on the track. So yeah, um, it was absolutely justified for, for, for there to be a red flag at the start of that uh, particular Grand Prix. And the final one of 2022 was the Japanese Grand Prix, of course, because of too much rain. They did start the race and did one lap. And then, um, yeah, obviously it became too wet. And thankfully, nobody got hurt that day in what was uh, pretty tough conditions for all of the drivers and teams. Now, let's go to the Australian Grand Prix, because, of course, we had three red flags in total the first one here is for alex albin and the williams now the reason i think this is justified is one the gravel on the track you know it is a dangerous um substance i guess you could call it that's on the track that needs to be cleared it can cause the cars you know to spin off and can be dangerous for people around as well so yeah i think absolutely uh it was justified with that case but also Alex Albon's car could not be recovered safely. It could not be recovered from a safe spot by a tractor or a recovery vehicle. And it had to pretty much come onto the track or very close to the track to get Albon's Williams out of the way. And in those instances where the recovery vehicles have to come out either very close to the track or on the track to recover a car, then it has to be red flagged. It absolutely has to be. You know, that's um, what we all want after the Jules Bianchi accident, obviously, back in 2014. We do not want tractors or uh, recovery vehicles in the firing line too much of other cars. So, yeah, it is absolutely justified for a red flag in this situation, in my view. A bit more controversial, though, was Kevin Magnussen's a uh, car that was broke down after him hitting the barrier and his wheel flying off. And him broke down on the uh, inside of the inside curb, I guess you could say, of turn four. Now, the reason, in my view, um, and I think correctly is justified, is because, again, the recovery vehicles could not get this car off the track and away, uh, of course, from the other cars safely um so it had to be red flagged the recovery vehicles you know there wasn't a good enough gap in the barriers um i don't believe next to the circuit that could um that could possibly you know get this car um out of the way in a safe manner and you've got to say as well i know i think there might actually be a gap just next to magnuson's car but also, look how close Magnussen's car is to the track. You've got the inside curb right there. And the inside curb, you know, is quite close to, uh, or is right where the cars go on the apex of that corner. So, yeah, it would be wrong to have recovery vehicles, you know, in this area when cars are going past. Because, you know, someone on cold tyres could easily, you know, spin the rears up and end up spinning into a tractor, which, of course, we don't want that happening again, again, after the Jules Bianchi accident. So, in my view, the Magnuson red flag was justified because, you know, when you need recovery vehicles out there in dangerous spots, then I think that is when a red flag is absolutely 
justified. And then, of course, the third red flag was for the craziness on the uh, third standing start of the race, where we had multiple accidents with Sainz Alonso, Sergeant De Vries, Ocon Gasly, and yeah, it was a chaotic race ending in Australia. So, in terms of the FIA and whoever the FIA race director tends to be, and their judgment for what is a red flag and what isn't, most of the time, I think it's okay. Uh, there has been, though, two or three times under Michael Massey in 2021 where I think he overreacted for sure. But, yeah, uh, at least since we've had new race directors since the start of 2022, I think the use of the red flag has been fine. And actually, looking back, it was talked about quite a bit at the end of the Italian Grand Prix last season that um, the race should have been red flagged and people were thinking, and even at the time I disagreed and was like, no, we shouldn't end the race under a red flag because I was, uh, I think I said that we you know, shouldn't end, uh, end the race under artificial means or something like that. Looking back, I was wrong because you had recovery vehicles on the track and they had no choice to come on the track to recover Daniel Ricciardo's McLaren, and it was dangerous, so it should have been red flagged. So, yeah, the FIA, they don't get it right all the time, the race director, you know, he doesn't get it right all the time, but I think most of the time, the use of the red flag is justified. But with all the examples I went through, guys, let me know whether you agree or disagree with me or not in the comments section down below. Very curious to hear what you guys have to say. But until the next video, guys, has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.